Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So we will wait for maybe two more minutes because data keep coming. Then we will begin, continue with where we were left over last time. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Let's begin, okay? Well, we'll continue with the architecture slide. Uh, and I hope everyone can see the slide now. And uh, yeah, so uh, one thing that in this slide, you need to memorize, uh, uh, in this set of slides, okay, the, this lecture slide, you need to memorize is, uh, you know, the seven layers, OSI seven layers, okay? Of course, the, the most important ones are data link, network, transport, and application. But the other layers you also need to memorize. For example, you need to know that session layer is below the presentation layer. And uh, so basically presentation layer in, in between application and the session, okay? And uh, there's a physical layer below the data link layer, okay? And uh, last time we talked about uh, uh, the seven layers and uh, we went up uh, from the bottom, one layer after another. This will also be the structure of this course, okay? so. And we talked about the physical layer, right? When we talk about physical layer, we uh, mentioned an important concept that when you think about the uh, data sent over the wire, right? So also over the air, uh, you know, uh, through a medium, right? So this is really one bit at, at a time. So if you look at, uh, you know, network devices, they talk about network bandwidth, right? Or speed, okay? They are always talked about BPS, bits per second, okay? And this is very important here. And uh, in this physical layer, we talk about between two devices that are connected by a link, okay? How you transmit data from you know, one end to the other. Right? It can be a hub, it can be your link uh, to the wireless, sensor, uh, wireless router, or it can be uh, you know, in the same Wi-Fi environment communicating between two uh, laptops, okay? So, Next is uh, actually for, for the, between two laptops, actually, if you need to go through the Wi-Fi, right? So it's in the same environment. So it's uh, air media, okay? Then in the data link layer, we talk about how to move packets, okay? Right now, uh, previously, we only talked about bits, but, but a packet is a bunch of bits, right? But if you have a big file, you will cut them into individual packets, okay? As a data link layer, you have the largest packet, okay? which of course contains the data at the application layer, but also contains all the headers, 
of the above layers, okay, of the layers above. You will have a, a you know, let's say a Ethernet header and a trailer, okay? And then you will have IP header and a TCP header as a transport layer, okay, all the way up, okay? And you also have the application payload. And the application may have its own protocol, right? So if it's email, right, uh, you know, and maybe, you know, the web page, right? So the web page, uh, you know, HTTP, so it has uh, the headers of its own, okay? And so you will have the payload and the application header, then, then transport header, network header, and data link header, okay? And uh, so in the data link layer, last time we talked about, right? So the popular examples are Ethernet, where you are connected to, you know, a wired environment to a Ethernet switch, right? Another example is you are connected to a wireless router, right? So, so in, in wireless environment, the Router and switch are combining in one device. Okay, and you also have uh, you know uh, doxis, right? So this is uh, when you connect through the TV cable to to the backbone internet, right? So usually, so all the people in the same building are sharing the bandwidth of that uh, doxis uh, link. Okay, and but you are using a, this protocol, right? So to to share the bandwidth with each other. Okay, so you may experience, let's say, in the uh, in your like a uh, school dormitory, right? So if in the same building, maybe you are sharing the same bandwidth. So uh, if some roommate is watching some movies or doing some high bandwidth, you know, activities, right? So then your your network will become slow, okay? Because this is shared. Okay? The bandwidth out of the building is shared. And uh, so we have the protocol, which is a uh, you know, uh, uh, medium access control protocol. Okay, we will see a bunch of them, right? And uh, Ethernet now nowadays you don't need to complicate protocols because you know it's it's really a switch, okay? And previously uh, the older standard you need to prevent people from talking on the same media and corrupt each other. Okay, now there's no concern here, right? But we will see that later. And one important concept is MAC address. Okay, each network interface card that you you have on in your device, right, in your laptop, has a unique MAC address, okay? This MAC address doesn't change. Let's say if you connect to a Wi-Fi at UAB, but the MAC address is fixed. The IP address is UAB's IP address, but the MAC address is the same when you buy your, your device, okay? And when you go back home, okay? Then you are connecting your home Wi-Fi for them, right? And the home Wi-Fi has its own IP address uh, representing the location at your home, okay? Maybe different from UAB. But the MAC address is still the same address. Okay, the MAC, MAC address is uh, hard coding to your device, network interface card, when it's uh, produced. Right? And by this way, the, the manufacturer will make sure every device has its own unique MAC address. No two MAC addresses in the world will be the same. Okay, when they manufacture them, okay, they make sure of this. And so the interface is really, you know, again, all three, at least. Uh, so the, the bottom two layers really just care about one link, one hop, okay? How to move packet between two hosts, connect to the same media. There's no router, okay? If you leave the current medium, you are routing to another place. Right, if you're on the same medium, but everyone can receive it, basically, okay? But if you have a switch, right? It's not router yet, switch, then that can, can prevent someone else to receive the packet that you don't want. You, let's say A talk to B, C, C can, C can talk to D in the meanwhile, right? So we also have a switch that can avoid a certain amount of, you know, traffic, like uh, on the shared media, okay? But it, it, you cannot regard it as shared, totally shared media anymore, right? So it's, it's in between, essentially, okay? And the service is like, like media access control. Basically, if it's a shared media, like so, right? So for example, in the same classroom, a lot of students connect to Wi-Fi, right? You cannot send the signal all together, right? Because then you know the ear, it's added signal. You cannot recognize each one, okay? So there's a way to make sure each time snapshot, right? Only one uh, person is talking, okay? So this is the media access, right? So let me see. I, I think uh, it's left one, okay? And there's a per hop reliability and flow control, okay? There's a Flow control still, right? So reliability. So if you you know, let's say you you send something from one side to the other side, but there's a bit flipped or there's some sending too fast, it will have some mechanism uh, to tell, hey, the previous hop you should have slowed down. Okay, but again, keep in mind this is 
only on one hop between the two immediate uh, devices, okay, on the same medium. And uh, we also have similar things on the network layer, right? So that's for routing purpose, right? So you will consider routing, right, multiple hops, okay, from source to destination. Okay. And then we talk about network layers. Basically, you go outside the shared media, right? Okay, your own subnet. You, you get go to the broader network, right? So you can have different subnet connect together, okay? In the network layer is really where the routing uh, sits in, okay? So at there, you will have the IP address, right? Uh, or you can also call it internet protocol address, right? IP is internet protocol, okay? And by default, when we talk about IP, it's IPv4 that we have been using so far, right? But these days, because IPv4 has very limited uh, you know, address space, uh, for example, you think about uh, uh, it's actual integer, right? Integer, you know, it's 32 bits, right? You only have about 4 billion addresses, okay? And you know that the world has 6 billion people, right? Now, okay? So not even one person can get one IP address, right? That's very limited, okay? There are some tricks to, to achieve the IP address, you know, sharing like the NAT, so, so kind of te techniques we will talk about later, okay? So that allows us to actually each person ha can have multiple devices, right? But this is already it's a bottleneck, uh, the number of IP address, okay? And now we are moving to IPv6, right? So you're still in the transition period and it will be kind of like a, for a very long time, okay? Because you need to have a long period of time where your device support IPv4 and IPv6 for both, okay? So because some of the people uh, may, may still using IPv4, okay? They don't have IPv6 uh, support, okay? Until all the service providers and all the users, let's say, uh, replace their Mac maybe after using five years on, uh, let's say the machine laptop, let's say you have a new version that the new machine all have IPv6 and all the backbone have upgraded to IPv6. By that time, it's the time to switch, okay? And maybe we can slowly dump the backward compatibility to IPv4. But right now, both, basically most of the device will support both, okay? And so the IP protocol really, you know, uh, for routing, Right, send one packet to a specific destination, right? So when you, send, you say, hey, I want to send from Alice to Bob, right? Maybe uh, Alice and Bob, they, they have multiple routers in between, right? And they have, there are multiple routes, okay? And how do you choose a reasonable route to minimize the latency and, you know, and send the packets from source to destination, right? So this is what the IP protocol do. And it has uniquely uh, you know, globally unique addresses, just like a MAC address, right? But this is different, okay? IP address is relevant to your location, right? Because, you know, uh, we, uh, different people need to purchase IP addresses, okay? Right, so when they purchase the IP addresses, they will get a, a continuous range. And these may be another continuous range, and these range are split into two, okay? So whenever, for example, if UAB purchased a, a segment of IP address, right? So when you connect, you will use UAB's IP address. So IP address can, just close your location oftentimes, okay? But MAC address is unique. You can bring, uh, you know, travel abroad, right? So, and it's still that MAC address, okay? And uh, the, the reason is very simple. Routing basically from one location to another, right? It has to be associated with location, okay? And there's a concept called routing table, right? What is a routing table? Routing table basically tells you, for example, I have Alice, I have Bob, right? There are multiple uh, routers in between. And uh, so basically, uh, you can send stuff to Bob, right? So here it was says, hey, if you want to send to Bob's IP address, the next, uh, for example, this router can have a table. The next hop should be this guy. Let's say this guy is C, okay? You should send to C, right? And then C will send to Bob, right? So basically, if I want to send to Bob, who I should forward the packet to? Which router? Because this guy may have another router which connects to here, okay? From this port in, which port I should go out of the packet, okay, forward to the packet. So this is what the routing table is doing and how we can keep the routing table manageable, right? Because in the worst case, you need to have all the IP addresses of the world, right? So that's created, okay? So we'll see how, how to uh, make this small, right? So one idea is, of course, if you see some IP address coming, you, you, you try to probe and get this outgoing IP address, right? And you need to have some protocol like a BGP to, to make sure you have taken the good route, okay, initially. 
right? So, and uh, so there's a lot of issues, right? So if you have a lot of people, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? A lot of people, but they're in the same IP segment, right? So you don't need to, you don't need to give each one an IP address because they are clustered. They are prefix of IP address is the same. Right? So you can say, hey, prefix and wildcard as, as a later. Okay, so there are some, some details here that we will cover later. And uh, so the service will be delivering the packets across the network, but really it's carrying about the routing purpose, okay? From one machine to the other machine that you're communicating to directly, okay? And uh, so it also handles fragmentation and reassembly. The reason of fragmentation reassembly is because some of the routers may not support you know, very big packets, right? So for example, if you have, uh, you want to send stuff to there, right? And uh, along the way, you can have, let's say, route, uh, let me change there. You can have, let's say, route one, route two, route three, route four, okay? And your packets may be, uh, uh, let, let's make it simple, maybe 100 bytes, okay? But why is this? Again, these numbers are not making much sense. I, I just illustrate, okay? Maybe you have, maybe you have uh, 100 bytes, okay? 200 bits, okay? But when you send the packets over the other side, maybe here you can support the 200 bits, it's fine, right? But this can support only 30 bits, right? Then there you are in trouble because this cannot pass through there, right? So the router will help you fragment into four packets, right? 30, 30, 30, 10, and that's all. And when you receive as a destination, you need to reassemble them right, into 100. So there are some, some issues here called uh, fragmentation and reassembly. We will look at this later. Okay, because of some intermediate route may not support your packet size. Okay, it's too big for, for the result. Okay. And there's a lot of other things, right? Because you know, uh, router basically receive a lot of packets. Right? It's a shared public device, okay, and they go to other places. Right? But it, it itself has a limited buffer, right? So how how to manage this. Uh, if you have any question, feel free to ask or type in chat. Okay. And the next layer is transport layer, right? So now we know that we have IP handles the routing and then make sure we can find the best route from the source to destination, right? Then what's the rest? Above network layer, we don't care about what's the next route, okay? What's the next hop in my route, okay? I just care about from source direct to destination, right? Because the, the IP layer already handles it that way. But we have some other things we care about. One is called a multiplex and demultiplexing, right? So what, what does this mean? This means, hey, I have a source, I have a destination host, but I have different applications, right? Uh, maybe I have a, you know, uh, you know, WhatsApp, right? And here we, we, we may have some like, uh, you know, Amazon app, right? So a lot of apps, okay? And we will communicate with different servers, right? Okay? And these servers, will forward the content to us again, like a response, right? But once they forward the response, how do I forward the Amazon's response to Amazon app, okay? And the forward, uh, you know, uh, uh, WhatsApp response to WhatsApp, right? So, so this is called a demultiplexing, okay? So this is very simple. Basically, each communication is between the source IP address, and we also have the port number, okay? And the destination also have IP address port number. These two uniquely define your application, okay? So IP only define your host, your machine, okay? And the port number define, each port number is associated with each application in the host, okay? By that way, if we, let's say, include both IP and the port in your header, right? So when I send a response, I tell you, hey, which IP and which port I want to communicate, okay? And then things will, will be very nice, right? So I, I know, hey, this is for this application, that's for that application, because we have the port. This is called a uh, DEMA multiplexing, right here, okay? And multiplexing basically says that you, 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 ask, you have a web server, you also have another like a server. Right? So then you also, when you send, you use different port number to tell the others to communicate with you, okay? But when you, you put this into your wire, it's the same wire. This is called a multiplexing, okay? So basically we are using port number to, you know, differentiate different applications. That's called a multiplexing multiplexing and then uh, demultiplexing, okay? The second uh, use of transport layer protocol, right, UDP and TCP, 
uh, UDP, I, I, I don't think that's perfect. Okay, TCP is mainly doing com just control. Okay, so what it does is that, so you know, when you keep sending stuff, right, so the router, as we said, the router may not be able to handle so much uh, bandwidth, right, so, so much. Okay, so if it can only send out in uh, 10 Gbps, okay, 10 gigabits per second, but you know, three people each send uh, some stuff in 10 gigabits per second, right? So then two thirds of the packet will be dropped, okay? And what's worse, right? And TCP will retransmit because destination will not acknowledge they receive the complete packet, right? So, so this will cause it to con continuously retransmit and have no progress. But each retransmit will cause more traffic, right? So this is the internet meltdown, okay? And TCP has some way to handle this, okay? Right, so like an exponential backup, which we'll, we'll see later. Okay. If everyone find a, they start to drop packets, they will reduce the transmission speed by half, okay? Then things will get back to normal, but they need to probe slowly to see where they can reach, right? They will slowly increase, but when they detect packet drop, they will back off uh, aggressively, okay? And there's also, you know, reliability and in-order delivery, right? So this is saying that, hey, uh, reliability is uh, basically we will retransmit, we need a acknowledgement, right? So this is for TCP, okay? UDP, we don't need it, acknowledgement, okay? For TCP, uh, we, I need to make sure the other side received my message, right? So uh, I cannot say, hey, I pushed that to you and you say, that's fine. Right? And until you confirm that you received the message, I can, I can make sure I, I don't care about that packet again. Otherwise I need to hold it for retransmission later, just in case you didn't receive it, okay? So this is called reliability. Another is called in-order deli in delivery. What it means is that when you use TCP to send this stuff, okay? Let's just assume you are sending from machine A to B, okay? Let's say IP address of A and B, okay? But maybe you are using two different channels, right? So by channel, we are talking about a combination of A's IP address and A's application's port number, let's say P1, okay? And the B's, so destination's address and destination's port number, maybe two. Okay. Maybe you have another P3 and a P4, okay? Let, let, so actually you can also send to P2, okay? So basically all four together decide a channel, right? So if you have A, P1, B, P2, A, P3, B, P2, they are different channels because P1 and P3 are different. Only when all four numbers are same, it's the same channel, okay? Within each channel, if you send stuff, it will be in all the transmission. For example, if you send a, uh, let me see. For example, you can first send a, a RAD packet, okay? And then you, let's say, you send a green packet, okay? And then, you, for example, you will send a uh, blue packet, okay? And you send a purple packet. And all these packets will be received in the other side, on the other side, the channel, in the same order. So the purple will be received first, then blue, and then green, and then red, okay? But there's no guarantee between different TCP connections, okay? For example, we, we can have a pink, pink packet send at the beginning, okay? And we can have a, let's say, a brown packet send at the very end, okay? Even though the sender side maybe send this packet first, Okay, and then send this last, and then they send this in between. There's no guarantee that, you know, be, uh, you know, on this channel, it will receive in exactly this order. Okay, between different channels that you have no guarantee. This in order delivery only for one TCP connection. Okay, for example, even though this packet is sent earlier, but maybe it's sent to somewhere, you know, the router is super busy. It's forwarding a lot of other packets in its queue in the front. Okay, right, there's a lot of earlier packets. Then it will be delayed in this router a little bit, okay? while the other packets just route to some other route and immediately get forwarded, okay? If that happens, it's possible that the pink will be received after the red one or even the green one, et cetera, okay? And the brown one uh, may be received also earlier than the purple one. For example, if the purple one gets stuck in some router, okay? So there's no guarantee of the order, the in-order delivery for different connections, different channels. But for the same channel, we have the guarantee that Whatever you send first will be received first, okay? And uh, so, and again, keep in mind that when you decide what is a channel, it's decided by all four numbers. 
the IP of the source machine and the port of the source application and the IP of the destination machine and the port number of the destination application. Okay. Any questions? Okay, if not, let's continue. So these things are important when you do the socket program, okay? And even important in other, if you know MPI, so the tag basically is like a port name, okay, when you send, see it, send stuff like MPSN and my MPI receipt, okay? And uh, so then, then there are two- I have a question. Okay, yeah, please go ahead. Um, on the network layers, what did uh, routing tables do? I couldn't hear you, it was like breaking up for me. Oh, you, you are talking about the network layer, right? Uh, okay, so let me let me try to illustrate. Because previously we were talking about the transport layer, right? So let, let me let me show you some some maybe pictures that will be easier. Okay. Uh, the image. Yeah, here's example. So right now you don't need to understand everything, okay? Because we will cover that later, but get an impression of what, what this stuff is, okay? So here's example of the routing table, right? So let's say we want to send a packet from 111 to uh, 10111 to 10117, okay? And what we will do is we will, because we know our destination is 10117, uh, 10171, okay? And we will look it up. Right, so we will, we will look it up and we will look at this town one seven. Okay, this is like a water car. Okay, zero means water car. You can match up. Okay, if that's the case, I'll, the next hop I will send to this this link. Okay, right. So I, I find maybe there's a lot of routers, but I find hey, this this is my destination. I will send to this router. Okay, and now when the packet arrives, this this is router, it will again it knows the destination is this destination. Right? I will look at this again, and I will send to this router. Okay. And instead of sending to other routers, I, I connect, I will send to uh, 10, 1, 4, 2, so, and, uh, which is this one, okay? And when the packet arrives at this router, I know that destination is again this, right? So because the source and destination are actually in the packet, okay? So we will find this and we, we know that, hey, I should send to 6, 2, right? which is this one. It's not a 4, 1, this one, because it's connected to 4, 1, right? So I will send the packet to here. Uh, is this clear? Yeah, you cleared it up, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so uh, just to get an intuitive idea of you. Okay, uh, you don't need to understand it too deep here because you know uh, we will cover that in detail later. But just to uh, get an idea. Okay, let's continue. All right, so that's a network layer, and we talk about transport layer, congestion control, etc. Right, so and the multiplexing, that's very important. Okay, the port number. Okay, and next uh, we have the session layer. Okay. The session layer is, uh, you know, is not actually there. Right? Session layer and transition layer is not adopted by the the current uh, internet design. It's just uh, when when the OSI model proposed, uh, it was there. Okay, actually, it's merged. The functionality merged to application or to transport layer, right? So the session layer, from the name, what is the session, right? So if you ever did uh, some like Web 2.0 programming, right? so let's say JSP, etc. Okay, you know that if uh, you use a stateless connection, right? So for example, you have a request, but you don't want your information to be tracked, right? So you, that's just a request, okay? But if you, you, you have a login, right? And then maybe you, you're buying to a credit card and you have a shopping uh, card, right? So, so this kind of stuff, then, you know, you need to be tracked, right? So you, you, that says a session that you, you start shopping, online shopping, the session begins. And when you, you finish the shopping, right? Clear the shopping cart, right? So, uh, the, the session ends, okay? If you have such a session, this is the concept of session, right? You have a state on the server, right? Man, tracking your history of browsing for them, okay? So this is really access management, right? So you, you need to log in, for them, right? So, and the synchronization, okay, the information, okay? And uh, so, but, but this is not clear, right? So it has a lot of other stuff, okay? So for example, you can insert checkpoints, right? Just in case, you know, the status, you need to save the status, right? Just in case some connection loss, uh, you know, uh, some some power loss, et cetera, right? So you need to have some checkpoint backup so you can recover your session, right? So for example, when you do the shopping and suddenly you drop your phone, right? So uh, uh, there's no battery, okay? 
and you can you, you can use uh, when it's back or you have another device to connect back again you, you you can see the history of how much how many things you you have put into the car okay right. so this is the session right so and the next is the presentation right presentation is really caring about formats okay so uh, for example i'm not sure whether you you are aware of what's the big indian and the small indian it's basically in computer architecture i think uh pause okay so there's a lot of encoding stuff right so for example if you have a integer with four bytes right so 32 bits four bytes those bytes can can go from left to right or right to left okay that's how how differential big india and small india right so for example you have uh let's say if the first uh, byte could be maybe 32 the second byte could be uh how, how do they say this right so Let's just consider two bytes, okay? One, one, zero, one. Maybe just use four, four bits to represent. We should have eight, but it's not easy to see, okay? Another is maybe uh, zero, zero, one, zero, okay? Right. So this is the one way to represent, okay? Another way is you put zero, zero, one, zero, right? And then one, one, zero, okay? So there are different ways to interpret and depending on your machine, your hardware, right? How it interprets whether they are the same number or different number, okay? So this is how there's a big Indian, small Indian conversion, okay? If your machine is, let's say, a particular setting, but if the, the, the bit sent to you is another setting, you need to do this kind of conversion in your presentation, okay? Otherwise, it will recognize it as a totally different Indian, right? And there's also like, a, you know, encoding of the text, right? This is text encoding, this is number encoding, okay? And uh, numerical encoding. And uh, so there's also encryption, right? So if you, you know, when you are sending your password to Amazon, you want it to be encrypted, okay? You, you don't want to just uh, send it as is, okay? Because, you know, maybe on your shared media, another user is there. Right? Okay. So the application layer, application layer is pretty flexible. You can do anything, okay? So, so here is just say you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can design whatever you want, but you know these days you definitely need some uh, some some frameworks right to help you develop those apps. Okay, uh, writing from scratch is not affordable, right? but these frameworks are just helping you to frame your your application into the, like web pages or structures. And finally, when you need to communicate with each other, they are using circuit programming. For them, okay, so from the network side, it's it's all the same. It's just writing these stuff. Okay, so yeah, one question is where does the encryption happen? Right, so so there's no definite answer, okay? Because you know we don't have in, in the real world we don't have the presentation layer and the you know uh, the session layer, okay? So so you know encryption can happen in a lot of places. One example is you know the transport layer, right? In the transport layer. We have the you know TCP protocol, but right? if we want a TCP transmission to be encrypted, we should have you know. Uh, let me see whether we have this already. I think I have a link open, but it's not here. So we have a TSL. Okay, so TSL. Uh, I, I, early on, it's called a SSL. Okay, so let me. Yeah, so this is called a transport layer. Security. Okay, basically it's a TCP with data encrypted. Okay, when when you use TSL or TLS, TLS. Okay, uh, then then it's uh, you know it's safe. It's encrypted. Safe, right, it's using public key, private key. Okay, right. You you have a private key to verify the other side. Okay, and the other side can use your public key to send things. Okay, and uh, so this is a cryptography. I'm not sure whether you ever want to touch that, but no. TSL so in the early days is called SSL, secure socket layer. Okay, now, uh, basically you think about it's TCP but with data encrypted. Okay, and uh, TSL is used in the HTTPS. Right? S means secure. Okay, and uh, so what what does secure mean? All right, so I'm not sure what you can see. So there's a a lock in the browser. Right, so this this lock basically says we are transmitting using HTTPS, okay? HTTPS is application layer protocol, right? It uses TSL instead of the plain TCP to 
could do the transmission, okay? And this is encryption, encrypted TCP, basically. Right? And uh, so these days, wherever you go, actually we are transmitting using uh, HTTPS, okay? In early days, maybe 10 years earlier, we always see like HTTP, but these days, whatever you go, you can try, okay? Almost all the web pages are HTTPS with this, this lock here, okay? The reason is uh, very simple. Right? So Google will, like if you are using browser, okay, so Google will think a uh, web page is insecure, but right? it will have security warning to you if uh, the web page is, uh, you know, uh, it's not HTTPS, but HTTP, okay? But even so, uh, it doesn't mean that it's uh, insecure, right? So the web page is just not uh, encrypting, right? So because it's not a session, right? So it's plain web page. It can totally be, you know, HTTP instead of HTTPS. But Google will think about it as, you know, unsafe. That's why almost now every, by default, every server will transmit HTTP using HTTPS by default, okay? And maybe if you are a, you know, company, you want keyword ranking, Google will also downplay your, uh, your ranking right, in the web page, right? Uh, if you, you, you don't use HTTPS, okay? They think it's not fair, uh, not, not safe, okay? So, yeah, so for, for that example, you can think about it as happening in the transport layer because it's just a TCP, but with, you know, uh, with secure, right? So usually it will uh, happen in the other two layers, right? like presentation layer, etc. okay? And uh, so this, uh, you know, you can regard it as to happening in the presentation layer actually, right? And another example is, uh, you know, the PGP, uh, protocol in, for email, right? So email encryption. And that actually happens in the application layer. So it's really uh, dependent, right? So you can review one as happening in the transport layer, but another happen in the application layer. Because, you know, this can, you, you may decide, right? Okay, so next let's look at the concept of encapsulation, right? So we talked about encapsulation. So, when you have some data, okay, let's say the web page content, right? Of course, if the web page is big, it will be split into multiple packets, right? Let's assume the, the web page, the data can fit in one packet, okay? Now, if we want to deliver to the, the other machine, we need to walk down the stack first, okay? We first attach some additional information, right? So like, like, like the, the presentation layer information and session layer information here again, so we, we may not have those things, but you can think about it as HTTP stuff. Okay, right, the application level. And then we will attach transport layer stuff, right? So like uh, the port number and the IP address for the source and destination, okay? And then we will attach also the IP address, which is, as you see, important for routing, right, routing table, okay? And then we will have the, the data link, right? So one important thing that you need to attach is MAC address, okay? But there's a lot of other stuff, because the header, uh, we'll, we'll see, okay? Especially for, for example, for routing, you need to, we need to have additional information, right? So we will see, okay? And finally, you can send it out, right? So you will have physically. You will also have some uh, trailing stuff, okay? Uh, the reason is very simple because now it's on the physical media. I need to separate the packets, right? So there, there are some, some techniques to make sure, you know, it's safe separate. You have some buffer both before and after, okay? It's like some bits that have certain patterns okay? that cannot happen in the actual content. Of the other packet can only be in the web. Okay. We will have a look at the physical layer briefly in a later slide. Yeah, now let's assume the data has been sent delivered to the uh, the other the other side. Okay. And uh, uh, let me use yeah, assume that uh, the packet is um, uh, delivered right at the physical layer now. It will be unwrapped top, uh, in Unencapsulating some things, right? Uh, to the application. So by that time, it will drop, you know, drop the physical layer header and drop the link layer header, uh, drop the IP. Okay. And so, so again, so this may, may happen in, in the intermediate router and then come down. We will see a, an example later. But here, assume it's the end post. Okay. And then we'll drop the header here, header here, header here, and finally data give us the application. And the application can read the data. Let's say show in the web world. So a real life an, an, an analogy is that, uh, no, you have a, you know, 
label right contains uh, some some. Let's say this is your letter, right? So you want to route, uh, you want to send to address, right? But you cannot just send it, right? So you need to call a TCP, right? The TCP is doing something like uh, giving you all all those address information for, to the destination here and the, your your own IP uh, your own address, so the destination can respond to you. Okay. So this is like a what you typically put in the envelope, right? Right, right now, if you just call the socket program, it will do that, okay? And then it will walk down to the mailing system and it deliver to from Alice to Bob, okay? And Bob will get the content. Okay? So several several things you need to pay attention. So you will pack and unpack, right? So this is very similar to the, the encapsulation and the encapsulation, the encapsulation. Another important thing is that, you know, only you, Alice and Bob, care about the content, right? And the, the, the postman doesn't care about the content, okay? The postman only cares about how to deliver things to you. So they don't even know what's, uh, you know, what, what, what's in the letter, okay? And this is also for security purposes, right? While the end user, Bob, doesn't know what's happening in the routing place, right? So I, I don't care about the intermediate routing, okay? So simply, so, you know, if you look at the previous packet parts here, right? Uh, maybe we can go back a bit. For example, here, physically, I only understand this header, okay? And when you move up to data link layer, the link layer only understand the, uh, the next one, okay? Big link only understand the, the red packet. Then the, the, the light green part, then the dark green part. Okay. So they don't understand the content inside. Right. So this is what we need. Let's continue. Okay. All right, so uh, this is what we just uh, talked about. And here uh, we, we were talking about just a host to host directly. Right? So actually there's some switch or router in the in the middle, right? So what happens is it will, uh, again, let's just uh, drop those two layers that are actually not using the other, okay? And the physical layer maybe to low level, we don't care, okay? So here's an example <laughs> where we transfer files uh, from, let's, let's say we transfer files from host one to host two, okay? And there's a switch in between. Uh, so as we said, so here the, the application layer is actually FTP, okay? File transfer, we, we have a file transfer, okay? And the transport layer, FTP is using TCP because we need to make sure the file is successfully transferred, okay? And uh, we also have the, uh, you know, network layer, right? So the network layer, uh, you know, is the IP, okay? And finally, data link layer can be Wi-Fi, for example, can be Ethernet, here we are in Ethernet, okay? Let's see how a packet, you know, this is, uh, you know, this layer, Routes will hop after another. Okay, this is a direct entry. Let's take a look at uh, how, for example, we, we, we can replace, uh, you know, what is on, at the top, right? Instead of file transfer, I can use the video, right? So video client, video server, right? So then we will transmit to use the UDP, okay? Because video is so high volume, if I ensure every packet is a proper receipt, that will be crazy. Right? If you think about YouTube, right? sometimes you have drop some, some signals, some frames. That's fine, okay? So you don't care about it. And here is, uh, you know, uh, 802.11 is Wi-Fi, actually uh, standard for Wi-Fi, okay. 802.3 is Ethernet, okay. So here you can use also Wi-Fi, for example, if you are outside, outdoor, okay. You can also use Wi-Fi, right. So these are called all replaceable, okay. So here, let's take a look at an example of, let's say we, we think of the application is a web server, right, HTTPS, you know, and this is TCP, right? Or you know, T T T R uh, uh, T S L, right? So, uh, and uh, this is uh, IP, okay. And uh, this is Ethernet, right? So, this is a very typical, uh, you know, structure because the web server definitely is connected to Ethernet, okay. Right? And the user usually connect to wireless. Right? So, let's say we have a web page which we want to send back to a user who requested. This web page will be attached with HTTP header. We will see what, what HTTP header means, okay? It will contain some important information for web page, okay? And then we will 
will attach the TCP header. Right? So this TCP header uh, is, let's say, for congestion control, etc. Right? Also, the, the port number for D multiplexing. Okay. So this thing is called a segment. Okay? This is called a TCP segment. Okay. And when we have the IP header, it's called a IP data gram. Okay. So so here, different places we have different names for a packet. Okay. In the transport layer, a package is called a segment. Okay. In the IP I, I, in the network layer, a packet is called a data gram. Okay. So they have different names. When we talk about a packet as a segment, we are, talking, we are in the transport layer. When we talk about a data gram, we are in the network. Layer. Okay. And finally, we may have the Ethernet, right? so the link layer. Okay. This is called the Ethernet frame. So in the data link layer, link layer or data link layer, as I say, okay, we will call a packet as a frame. Okay. So for simply, since these are terminology that you, you need to memorize. Okay. So all three, these three, frame, right, datagram, uh, you know, all these three. Let me try to get rid of this. It's, it's difficult, right? I don't know why this is. So, so all three are packets, okay? All three are packets. But at different layers, packets have different names, okay? So at the transport layer, it's called segment. As a, you know, next layer, it's called a datagram. And as a, you know, uh, data link layer, it's called the frame, okay? That's what you have to memorize. And uh, when you, I think the previous example is not, I think they missed some, something there. Okay. So when you send stuff, okay, so when you send stuff, it's actually something like, uh, uh, yeah, there's some, when you send stuff, it's actually something like this. Okay, so you, you are sending like a, an encapsulate, right, and then here you will go up and then you decide the, the next IP, right, and then you will go down and then you go up. Okay, so this is something like this, you will unwrap in the switch, right? You, you don't care about what's up there. You don't know the content actually. You don't have the interpreter for it. Okay, so you will unwrap. Okay, and then you deliver, and the, only the host. Will. Okay. The last two. Years. Any questions so far? Feel free to ask. Okay. Quickly go through this. Okay, so this is the hourglass view of you know. Uh, of our, uh, you know, layers, right? So application layer, we have a lot of things, right? In the, you know, transported layer, mainly TCP UDP, but we also have the control protocol, ICMP, okay? And then in the middle layer, the network layer, we only have IP, okay? And, and down there, we have Wi-Fi, we have Ethernet, we have other stuff, right? And finally, we have critical layer, a lot of different critical media, okay? They are the protocol over the media. So you can see that uh, we have a bottleneck here, right? So IP, IP protocol is uh, like, a, it's very difficult to switch. Okay? You cannot change to IPv6 uh, in one day, okay? And uh, so, so this is very difficult to change, right? And so here we internet layer means that all network can interoperate. Here we are talking about the, the IP layer, right? So, so basically, they share the IP layer, right? We just add the application and add the medium freely, or one cost, okay? A constant cost because of the IP is shared. And uh, all application can function on all network, basically. Right? So in the very early slide, we showed that. And, but, but changing the IP is very, very difficult because it's everyone holding this, right? So this is, this is kind of like in the, you know, in, in the blockchain, right? So if you want to fix something, it's very difficult because everyone has the, Transaction data. Okay. So if everyone is using that, then, then it's very difficult to change. So the layered ab abstraction is very nice, right? So, but it's not always holding in reality. Okay. For example, we have firewalls, right? So after you get to the to your router, let's say a UAB, the router is it needs to check multiple. Content, right? It needs to check the IP address, whether it's from a malicious, you know, uh, website, and it need, probably there are some attacks. Their MAC address is remember, right? So they, they need to cross multiple layers, and some may need to check your application data to see whether it's a, it contains credit card information, right? For email, if you send with credit card information, yes, 
will reject your image. Right? So, so this cross many layers, many, multiple headers and even the data pool. Okay? And uh, there's also other stuff, right? So we will cover some of those later, okay? Like uh, the transparent proxies, right? So the proxies is where you, you know, you, you have something hiding in something else, right? So, uh, you know, for, for UAB, maybe they, they ban you from a website, but you, you know, because you, you, your actual packet is, uh, is for the proxy, right? But proxy is not banned by UAB, okay? But, but, you know, you can send it to proxy, but the payload is actually another packet, right? The packet can then be forwarded by the proxy to the malicious website and the comeback, right? So, so you can use this to bypass some restrictions, okay? And there's also NAT technology, right? So basically, you know, because the IP address is so limited, let's say the whole lab room, uh, at, let's say in our building, maybe sharing the same public IP address, but we, we need so many machines, right? So how do we implement this, right? When you communicate with others, how do, does it guarantee that it's delivered to your machine when you did the Google instead of the other classmates machine? So there's something. Okay. But all these require cross-layer uh, stuff. I think uh, I will uh, stop here. Uh, we will release the uh, we will release the first uh, you know uh, uh, the, the assignment, which is a quiz. Okay, and we will open it for two weeks. Okay, feel free to finish anytime within two weeks, and we will definitely finish this slide um, early next week. Okay, and uh, you can already begin to work on some of the questions, but maybe you if you want to delay a little bit, that's totally fine. Okay, Just eight questions. And uh, yeah. So the the two main um, classes that we need to go not classes but uh, I yeah. guess powerpoints we need to go over will be what we did this today and what we did last time. Uh, last class. La uh, yeah, we are on the same slide, so we are we are, we are talking about the same slide architecture. Okay, the assignment will be the same assignment. Oh, okay, well the same. Yeah, same assignment. Yeah, I'm just saying like. No, uh, I, okay, I, okay, okay. Because uh, previously it was not covered enough, right? So this time it's almost uh, covered up most of the content we are ready to release. But you can take your time. You can, okay. you can go to your next week's next class where we finish the slide and then we can because we will leave okay. it. Okay. okay. Well, I'm just trying to see to make sure because I'm trying to make a, I'm gonna I'm trying to make my quiz late and I was trying to make sure that uh what. The stuff that are going to be on the quiz is what we went over last time and what we go, going over now. What we went over now. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's a whole slides basically, including last okay. uh, last class, this class, maybe next class. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, we will release it today, but you will have two weeks to finish. Okay. Yeah. Anytime within two weeks is fine. Um, but but it's a, it's a time to well, it's a time the uh, assignment right. So when you begin, it will be time. So you may decide. Uh, I, I would recommend you to do that a little bit later, okay? But I will release it today, okay? Yeah. And uh, so- How much so, time do we have to do it? What? How, how much time do we have to do it? I think maybe- like when, when, we start, when it starts. Yeah, one hour, I think. Uh, but, but I will double check. I think it should be one hour, okay? Okay. It's very simple. Actually, if you are familiar with all those, you don't need a one hour. I, I think maybe 10 minutes, right? So if you, you are super familiar with the slide or the content, and uh, it's also okay if you have the slide just nearby and the one you, uh, you can search a little bit, that's fine, okay? Just uh, make sure okay. you understand those content. It's a way to help you that. And today we also have the lab, okay? I don't want to uh, delay all your time. So, so be, do remember to go to the lab, okay? We will start to look at the packet tracer. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, important to, to start, okay? That, that software will be used for four labs at least. Thank you. Any other questions? I will be here for maybe one more minute. Feel free to ask your question. Yes, is the is the lab is uh, attendance mandatory in there as well? Because I had a lot of feedback just from this. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the video later because I couldn't. I, I had a lot of trouble with it breaking up, and so I was gonna work on that stuff after I'd gone back and re-listened to the lecture. I understand. But it's yeah. So I I, I emailed. TA, so the TA should be able to video it. Okay, so if not, uh, some of you may remind him to, to take the video and then later share with you guys. It's okay? Okay, okay. So lab, but attendance in the lab right now is not mandatory for today? Uh, for today, not. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. But, but if you can go, just to try to go there because it's a 
So I set up with the software. Right, so okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any any other questions? Okay, if not, then I will disconnect. Feel free to send me an email if you have any questions and also the TA. Okay. And uh, I will see you next Monday.